Okay, this video today is going to show you how to not only test the road force of this wheel assembly here, but then to correct it using your tire machine. So let's just get right into this video. Hopefully you've watched the video on how to simply just balance this assembly. So I've got my, my uh, machine on here, okay? My tire's ready to go. And I've already done the tire pressure in it. So I'm gonna say, yes, it's done. And I'm gonna let it measure the road force just to get this video moving along. Again, all this information you'll be able to find in my Hunter how to balance video. Okay, so here we go. I have excessive road force detected in this assembly. I already knew this. I used the same uh, wheel assembly in a previous video. So what I want to do is I want to change this 21 number to the predicted seven. So I'm going to click on force match. Oops, better have your wheel lift down when you do this. And I'm gonna mark the two locations. So right now, um, it's asking me to, well, that's kind of neat. They're straight across from one another. It's asking me to mark a line on the tire. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark it on the outside of the tire, on the tire at the top, because that's what it's prompting me to do on the screen. Okay. I'm gonna click on servo and it's gonna flip it around and now you can see that the chalk um, is green on the rim and now i'm going to mark the rim with chalk as well you might say don't you dare mark my chalk with my rim with chalk but whatever it is what it is now i'm going to fix it okay and the way i'm going to fix it is by going over to the tire machine and lining up this mark on the tire with this mark on the rim so we take it off I'm gonna use my wheel lift, loosen this, double tap my lever. It'll thread off by itself. Slide it off and down. Okay, let's get to work. If you need to know how to use this tire machine, um, TCX 5775, something like that. I've got that in a video as well. Let the air out of the tire. Gonna set it up in the bead breaker. I sense that it's not quite got enough air out of it yet. I could just give it the business like I would at a tire shop probably, but I can be a little bit patient. So road force being um, sensing hard spots in the tire, it's gonna optimize this assembly and it's going to take this red 21 number and give me a number that's supposed to be acceptable if i get it into that acceptable range and it's all put together then then this tire is good to go for a little bit longer and if it has an unfixable road force then these are problems in the tire that uh just are they're 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 hard spots on the tire that are no good and they just you need a new tire so i'm going to break the bead Gonna stay away from the valve stem in case it has a tire pressure monitor. I'm gonna put the valve stem is at the bottom right now, so on the other side, so I'm not causing a problem. Valve stem's at the top. All right. Now, I noticed when I broke this bead that it looked like it kind of reseated on the other side, but I think we're good. I'm gonna throw it up here and apply the clamps. And what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna get a bunch of tire lube on my brush here. I'm gonna lube the tire all the way around, kinda like I was gonna remove it, but I don't plan on removing this. Then I'm gonna go underneath and see if that's even possible. Um, you know what? I think it's gonna be easier if I just do this this way. I've got plastic 
adapters in on my table there so I won't be damaging the front of this rim. And I'm gonna force that lube in all the way around in hopes that I can just turn this tire assembly without taking it off. Okay, I'm gonna grab a hold of the tire and it's now with the tire lube on there, it's spinning very easily. I'm gonna line up my two marks and then put air back in the tire. Remember that you're gonna use tire lube There's my two pops. Um, you're gonna use tire lube simply to make sure that this wheel assembly seals afterwards as well. It's not about making it easier to turn. If you put a dry assembly together, pretty good chance it's gonna leak. Okay, I did advertise that I have an automatic inflation station on the other machine. So I don't know why I'm wasting my time over here. It's just that I like to talk and I'm chilling out. Release. Get this up on the other machine again. Now, depending on your vehicle, I know what you're saying. You're like, well, this is taking a while. Why are we doing all of this? You know what? They're drivability concerns. If you have yourself an alignment machine like we do, and you've done an alignment for a customer, but that vehicle ends up back in your shop because of shimmies, vibrations, um, pulls, these can all be caused by um, road force problems in your tire. So, um, When I'm done this here, I'm just gonna go back to balance. And I'm gonna road force again. It's gonna ask me for my tire pressure, so I'm just gonna do it before it asks me, cause I know it's going to. So anyways, if you have a shop and you're doing alignments, this is gonna be a really handy tool to go along with those alignments. To the fact that if you're having a lot of trouble having vehicles drive straight down the road perfectly, you might wanna take those wheels off and balance and road force them before you do alignment checks. And I know that's a lot of time and effort on your part, but you're gonna get the best quality work out of that. Okay, I'm gonna say yes to the inflation station. It's just making sure. I'm gonna close the calf monster over there. Now remember that the tire and the rim are back in a different orientation, so that's why I had to rebalance. Um, they might need more weights or less weights. Okay. Well, that wasn't the results that we were looking for. As it's saying that I have a road force of 20 and a predicted of 12. If you've used some of this uh, modern uh, computerized balancers before, you can get chase spins. I believe that I'm in a chase um, area right now. It's asking me now to mark the tire here. And mark the rim there. And I'm like, man, you know what? You got me. Okay, I'll, uh, I'll play your game here. Now what I'm gonna have to do is get rid of some of these marks on here because I've got too many marks going on. So what I'm gonna do is mark that right there. I'm gonna give this one a T. All right, I'll play your game there, Hunter. I'll see what you've got in store for me this time. Improving my road force by one number was definitely not what the doctor was calling for there. But whatever. I've got some patience and some time. 
And if this video doesn't work, you'll just I'll hit the delete button and I'll find another tire and rim assembly. Ha ha. The nice thing is, is that this thing's well lubed up. It's gonna be pretty easy to do this job. Okay, so there's my mark that goes all the way around and there's my T. We're gonna humor it. We're gonna do it again. There's my beads are seated. Pop, pop. Now, I don't recommend that you take a rim off the balancer two or three times to get it right. But, you know, we get those weird problems. And I think I already showed this rim's got some, maybe I didn't show it, maybe I showed it in my last video. This, this rim has some previous damage. It looks like someone's done a little bit of cleaning up or welding on it. As I know that this vehicle has bitten some curbs and we have some bent rims on it. Maybe this is just a good testament that it shows you that, yeah, you got a problem. But, of course we want things to work out. So, let's try it again. Sometimes you just have to hit auto set pressure. Doesn't happen very often. We're gonna do that 33 PSI. We're gonna road force. See if it makes a difference. I do really like that tire feature. The fact that it tells you what color call it to put on. And we haven't even gotten into straight tracking yet, putting them on the vehicle in a manner that will allow the best, the optimal tires and the optimal spots for your vehicle to drive straight down the road. Okay, I'm gonna put the lid down here. Back to balance. It does want me to reset itself. We've turned it again, so I expect different um, balancing numbers. Yeah, way less. Measuring tire stiffness is what the road roller is saying. It's measuring the road force. And voila. We are in a better situation than what we are. We have green road force numbers of nine. We have, um, you know, weights to put on to balance and this thing will balance out. So I guess I got to show you twice. And I guess when I did that, I'll show you maybe not some frustration that can happen with new technology, but there are errors in it as well. It's using a laser system to measure um, rims and wheels and a roller to sense things. Um, it's using shop air for the roller and with all these things combined, all I can tell you is that I've had very good success with this machine. I'm not going to um, throw this video out and get another one. I'm just gonna show you that um, be patient and um, this machine's gonna be very, very good for you. If all you're looking to do is balance wheels, I wouldn't drop the price tag on this and just balance with it. But if you're interested in road force and putting wheels on the vehicle with the least amount of vibration and sensing which way this vehicle is gonna pull because this tire has got more road force than these ones, then this machine is gonna be good for you. Anyways, that is a video on how to force match the road force on a wheel assembly.